Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today's video I'll be reacting to a video that's quite popular. This is the video where Dr. Yoon, who I follow here and respect, I should add that, on YouTube, he is very smart. Obviously he's a doctor, duh. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to nutrition and skincare and everything else that he does on his channel. This particular video is linked to skincare and I really wanted to talk about my opinion on what he said about it because, I mean, he's a doctor but he's not a dermatologist or a chemist, so I felt that I could talk about or disagree with him or agree with him on some of the things I he mentioned in the video. All right, let's get into the video. You may be surprised that there are certain things that you may think are good for your face, but just are not. My name is Dr. Anthony and I'm known as America's holistic plastic surgeon and I help health conscious women over 30 look their best by teaching them a holistic approach to health and beauty. Let's start with number five, it's bar soap. Now I'm a guy, you know, I have applied, I've used bar soap to cleanse the skin of my face countless times like most other men and probably most other women. But bar soap is not good to wash your face with. Bar soap is very drying to your skin and it often contains sodium lauryl sulfate. Now this is a substance that causes the soap to lather really well because we like lathering, don't we? Well unfortunately that same lathering substance can really, really dry your skin. So use bar soap on your body if you want, but keep it away from your face. First of all, let me talk about the bar soap part and then I'll talk about sodium lauryl sulfate. So I'm African and when it comes to bar soap, I don't have a problem with it. However, I will advise if you're gonna use a bar soap to use the unscented, unfragranced ones. Because yes, bar soap can be stripping, but growing up in Africa, I used bar soap pretty much my whole entire life growing up and even in boarding school and high school I used bar soap and yes my skin wasn't tip top but I don't remember breaking out as much as I'm breaking out now using all the amazing skincare ingredients. Now I'm not saying that bar soap is a better alternative to skincare routine and everything else that's pretty popular now but I am saying that if bar soap is all you can afford just get the ones. I think Dove makes a really good one. That's the one that a lot of dermatologists would recommend if you have like eczema or like any skin conditions. Don't, just because the doctor said not to use bar soap, go invest in something you can't afford or invest in like a really bad skincare cleanser just because you don't use bar soap. Okay, now the sodium lauryl sulfate part. Yes, sodium lauryl sulfate is a primary surfactant that can be stripping, drying if your skin can't tolerate it. However, there's people that the skin can tolerate sodium lauryl sulfate. If you're one of those people, definitely continue using your product that has SLS or LCDS, but if your skin can't handle it, then please by all means switch over to something else. All right, let's move on. My number four thing you've got to keep away from your face is petroleum jelly. So you may have had it applied by your mother or your grandmother onto your face or your lips, and it was seen and has been seen for a long time as the ultimate natural moisturizer. Well, take a look at what it is. Jelly isn't so bad but petroleum, it was, actually, uh, it was actually discovered at the bottom of basically petroleum barrels. And this is where it comes from. And this is not good for your skin. Uh, it can also clog your pores. It's very occlusive. So if you've got any history of any type of acne, not good to put on your skin. So stay away from petroleum jelly, honestly, over your whole body. All right, that last part of over your whole body, uh, no doctor, I disagree with you 100%. You can use petroleum jelly in your body and you'll be just fine. That shit protected me all the winters that I couldn't afford shit other than petroleum jelly and my skin was just fine, okay? When I was a broke ass college student, petroleum jelly came through for me, so no, I disagree. Also, dermatologists always recommend petroleum jelly. He's clearly not a dermatologist and doesn't know much about skincare. I don't care that he's a doctor, I respect him for being a doctor, but I disagree. Petroleum jelly, yes, can be occlusive, but again, going back to my being African anecdote and how we would use things like bar soap, petroleum jelly, that's all we could afford at the time, being, you know, kids in school, and we were fine, you know? So if your skin can handle petroleum jelly, please by all means use it, but just use it with caution. I would advise using petroleum jelly in more winter months though, just because obviously it's a lot colder, so you wouldn't like get really greasy or anything like that. Petroleum jelly, it's not the bad, the worst thing. Trust me, there's more high-end products that, mm, sis, you don't even want to deal with. So yeah, if this is all you can afford, definitely go for it. Well, another thing you want to avoid is body moisturizer. Body moisturizer is great for your body, but not so great for your face. For your face, stick with a good facial moisturizer. 
We have one in my uh, line, Yoon Beauty, which is made with natural and organic ingredients. I love how he's promoting his line here. It's a great moisturizer for your face, does not clog your pores, and has antioxidants in it. So use a moisturizer like that, one made for your face, not one made for your body. Okay, yes, for this one, I actually agree with him. This is the first one I agree with him on. Definitely don't use body moisturizers on your face. But again, if that's what you can afford, definitely go for it. But once you get your coins up a little bit, definitely invest in a good facial moisturizer because yes, body moisturizers can be very occlusive, can have harsh ingredients that your face can't handle. So yeah, definitely, definitely do not use body moisturizers on your face. I 100% agree on this one. Well, my number two is rubbing alcohol. Now, astringents, you may have heard of that, or toners often contain alcohol in it and it gives the same feeling as rubbing alcohol on your skin. But what it does basically is it rubs off all of the oils of your skin. And there are people who have real oily skin, they have acne issues, excess sebum, and they think that using rubbing alcohol or astringents can get rid of that oil. But what happens is, is it gets rid of the oil temporarily, but then your skin realizes that it's missing oil and it creates even more oil uh, in response. And so what can happen is you can get into this vicious cycle where if you've got oily skin and you're using rubbing alcohol or astringents or toners with alcohol, that your skin actually gets more and more oily. So stay away from it. This one is 100%. Rubbing alcohol can be very stripping. Rubbing alcohol includes things like ethanol or isopropyl alcohol. Those can be super drying on your skin. Definitely try to stay away from products that contain any form of rubbing alcohol. Like he said, it can be very, very stripping. Other alcohols like cetyl alcohol or sterile alcohol are not drying and are not alcohols. They're oils with the OH group attached to it, so they're just called alcohols. Other than that, rubbing alcohols can be super, super, super drying on your skin definitely stay away from them. This one's gonna be a bit controversial. It is, yes, that. So there are sperm facials that are very popular. Uh, people literally sell sperm facials for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And there is this belief that applying semen or sperm basically to your skin is actually good for it. Well, the reality is probably pretty far from that. Uh, people say, well, because it contains antioxidants, it's good for the skin. I mean, marginally, but we really haven't tested just how much antioxidants are in that. It contains often, well, sometimes, I guess, depending on the company that you keep, it can contain sexually transmitted diseases. I can't even continue to listen to this ridiculousness. Like, why? Why is this even a thing? Is this like, okay, I, I just have so many questions. I can't even put it together. Like my brain cells are working so hard right now to fathom that someone is allowing someone to put semen where you don't even know the source or I don't care that it has antioxidant properties. I don't care that it has whatever properties. Like, no, just don't put someone's semen in my face. That's just so disgusting. Like, no, 100% agree with doctor. Please don't do this. Please, please, please. Do not, for the life of me, ever let anyone put semen on your face. There's just so many other, this, it's, it's 2020, there's so many other beneficial ingredients that are out now that you don't need to do this. So please, this should not even cross your mind. So yeah, I can't even finish this video. I can't listen to the rest of it. But yeah, that's it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What was the most ridiculous thing you guys heard? I mean, I'm sure semen was the worst. I shouldn't even ask that. But um, if you have any comments, please leave, down, leave them down below, especially about the semen one. Like, what? I really want to hear your thoughts on that. If you've gotten the semen facial, please leave in the comment below. I really want to know your thought process that led you to get it. Like, what? Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely hit the like button if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and join the family. We're here every other day. At this point, I'm here like every every two days. So your girl is uh, just trying to get these uh, YouTube views up. So please support. I really appreciate it. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.